Yo, you curious about embroidery? Let's talk about it. Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching the Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. Short me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you got to do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open. Listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there. And I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Fat Man Scoop, Big Brando. Let's go. Sat in everybody, boy Big Brando, and today let's talk about turning your hat from this to this. Now, not too long ago, I posted a TikTok and an Instagram reel, and I think a YouTube short of the cleanup process when it comes to doing 3D embroidery. When I'm talking about 3D embroidery, I'm talking about this right here. This is when the embroidery looks like it's puffed up and raised up off of the hat. Now, most of you guys might be familiar with this type of embroidery because that's what New Era does. If you ever wore a New Era 5950 baseball hat, that style of embroidery on the front is what we refer to as 3D or 3D puff embroidery because it's puffed up and it's raised up off of the hat. The way that happens is you lay down a piece of foam and then your embroidery machine stitches over the foam, and then you peel the foam up and that's what we have here. So this is what it looks like when it comes fresh off of the machine. There's the foam, I'm using three millimeter foam. I tape it down, it stitches over it, and then you peel this up, and then you go through here and you start snipping away at things. As you can see, there's a lot of loose threads hanging out. So there's a lot of cleanup involved after the hat comes off the machine. This is the part that not a lot of people show on YouTube, and this is the part that a lot of people have questions about, because they're like, hey, it doesn't just come off the machine ready to go. No, there is a bit of cleanup involved. And maybe it's just my embroidery process, but this is how I clean things up, and this is how I get the hat to look like this to be delivered to the client. So before I take the camera and go into the shop and show you guys exactly what I'm doing, I'm gonna be using my Rakoma MT1501 and embroidery machine. If you are interested in embroidery, I highly recommend hitting up Rakoma and asking them every single question that you might have. It might be questions that I personally can't answer, so it's always best to get the information from the source. Now, before I picked up my machine, this is what I did was I hit up every single company and asked them a million questions. One, because I didn't know nothing about embroidery, meaning I didn't know nothing about embroidery and stuff myself. I was very familiar with the process because I've had local shops do my embroidery for me, but I've never been hands-on with the machine. So my biggest reservation was, can a dummy like me actually run a machine? So every question you might have about embroidery, I highly recommend hitting up Racoma, talking to a sales rep, and asking those questions. People always feel like they're obligated, like if they click the link in the bio to get the information about the machine and a salesperson reaches out to them or they reach out to a salesperson, they feel they're gonna get sold on a machine or it's like buying a used car or going onto a car lot. It's not like that. Racoma's not gonna give you a machine that you can't handle. Racoma's not gonna sell a machine to somebody that can't afford it. When you reach out and talk to somebody from Racoma, you tell them what you wanna do with the machine, you tell them what your plans are, you tell them what your experience level is and they'll handpick the machines that would fit your needs the best. Doesn't mean you're signing up to buy all these machines. They're just giving you the machines that they recommend and you do your own research read up on them, watch videos about them. They want you to make an educated purchase. When I say educated purchase, they wanna make sure that their Racoma machine is right for you. If you have any worries, now is the time to ask that sales rep because they've heard it all, especially for me. Like I said, I asked a million questions, man. And the reason I went with them was for their customer service. Two, they didn't try to sell me on a machine. I was actually looking for a machine that was a lot bigger and way more expensive than the one I got. And they talked me out of it and explained to me why the MT-1501 would be better suited for my needs. And it was the best purchase ever. So if you're thinking about embroidery, check out the Wacoma link in the description box or hit them up directly. And start to gather up all that information before you make the purchase, all right? So I'm gonna take the camera over there and I'm gonna show you exactly how I clean these hats up to go from this to this. All right, check it out. I'm gonna try to talk over the machine while it's running, but people wanted to see the full process of what we do after the machine stitches the hat. We're gonna be creating these right here. So this is 3D puff embroidery. You guys can see that. We've got a little order going right now. 
This one just came off the machine. The machine's loaded up and running another one right now, but I wanted to go through the full process of what we're doing. This is three millimeter foam right here. So when you do puff embroidery, what you're doing is laying the foam down, as you can see on there, and then it's stitching over the foam to raise it up off of the hat. So first thing you do after this comes off is you pull this up. Peel all of the excess foam off of there. I'm trying to do this on the camera for you guys. Now, there's a bunch of little loose threads hanging out right there, right? We gotta trim all that down now. So you take you some little scissors like this, and then you're just gonna snip away at all the loose threads. This is the part of embroidery that not a lot of people talk about right here, is the cleanup. Um, the reason why I wanna show this is because it doesn't just come off the machine ready to go and you're like, good to go. There is a little bit of cleanup involved, a little bit of labor. The good thing is while that machine's running, you can start cleaning up some other hats. Sometimes we'll just stack up a bunch of hats that just need to be cleaned up and then we'll come in and just bang it all out. Now, the reason why there's some excess threads and loose threads and stuff, sometimes when the machine cuts the thread and then it starts stitching again, the loose thread might get stuck in the middle of that and all it is is just coming back through and just cleaning that thing up, slicing it away. Get yourself a little brush like this, brush your back. Now all the loose threads are taken care of. Now there's a lot of foam left in between the letters. That's when you take some tweezers and you get inside here and you pull up the excess foam like this right there. So you just Go through with the tweezers, pull out all the excess foam. You gotta remember when it's stitching over the foam, what it does is perforates all the way around the design. So then when you peel the foam up, there's foam that's not attached anymore, but it's inside the middle of the letters, like weeding up vinyl. You gotta get in there and start pulling all that excess foam out of there. So depending how detailed your design is and how intricate the design is, if you're doing puff embroidery like this. This part could get a little tedious. It's like weeding vinyl, but at the same exact time, um, might be therapeutic for some people. Some people like weeding vinyl. Some people like doing the cleanup part of embroidery. I personally uh, don't care for either of them, but it has to be done. So stuff like this is what I'm peeling up right now. So you do want to get yourself a good set of tweezers, uh, not too flexible, but also not too stiff, um, and be able to maneuver around some of these letters, depending how tight the letters and spacing is, um, to get in here and clean it up. Currently, we're doing a small little run of these hats right now. Um, the homie Edwin wanted to order 12 more, so we're running 12 for them. So this is currently what the hat looks like. See that? Brush off a lot of that excess. So the next step is we're gonna take this heat gun right here. I'm gonna heat up the hat. What's gonna happen is it's gonna tighten up the threads, tighten up the foam that it's stitched over and clean everything up. This is the last step to the whole process. So now that I cut off all the loose thread, got rid of the excess foam, hit it with the heat gun, tighten everything up. Bingo, all done. Hopefully you can see that in camera. Another one done, wait for this one to get off. I'm gonna hoop the next hat, keep it moving. There you have it. That's my whole cleanup process when it comes to embroidery. Even when I do flat stitch embroidery, it does require a little bit of cleanup, not as much as this because we're not using foam, but we do use stabilizer on the back, which is rip away. And there are loose threads here and there, but for the most part, 80% of my time running this machine, we're doing puff embroidery or 3D embroidery. So once you get into a good workflow of hooping the hat, setting up the machine, and then your cleanup, this thing basically prints money for you. As the machine's running, you're cleaning up other hats. As the machine's running, you're hooping the next hat. As the machine's running, you could be pressing t-shirts. As the machine's running, you could be making YouTube videos. So hopefully this helps people out. I know there's gonna be people asking, hey, where do you buy your foam from? I usually buy my foam from Amazon. If you just typed in craft foam, three millimeter craft foam on Amazon, there's a bunch of them that come up. 
different size sheets, different thicknesses, different colors, different prices. Pick whichever one fits your needs and go with it. Same goes for thread. A lot of times I buy my thread from Amazon. Why? Because of that next day turnaround for being a Prime member. So sometimes I'll find thread on there for pretty cheap. You'll get one of those big spools for like four bucks and then it gets delivered same day. Or if not, it gets delivered next day. That's why I continue to buy thread from Amazon. I also buy my bobbins from there. I use the paper sided bobbins. They come in a pack of like 120 or something like that for like nine or 10 bucks. I've also bought needles from Amazon. My titanium needles, buy those from Amazon also. I think they're the 80, 20s or 70, 30. I can't remember the exact size or whatever it is, but you buy those in a big old pack. And then you have that pack and you end up not having to buy some for the longest time. I've only bought a pack of needles once since I've had this machine. And I think we're coming up on two years of owning this machine. So majority of your embroidery supplies can be bought from Amazon. You can also buy it from embroidery supply companies. Just Google embroidery supplies. Things will pop up, thread, foam, needles, bobbins, bobbin cases, all that good stuff. I use Amazon because it's easier. They don't pay me to say that and Amazon doesn't pay me nothing. It's just convenient for myself. And as far as blank hats, I buy directly from the manufacturer. This hat right here is made by Otto. I buy directly from Otto. Otto is located here in California, so it's easy for me to pick up. Uh, most of you guys know this, I hate paying for shipping. I hate waiting for stuff to be shipped to me. So if I could shop locally and pick the stuff up myself, the quicker I have it in my hands, the quicker I could get to the money. So that's why I use hats like the Yupon Classic. That's why I use Otto. That's why I use Deki. All of these places are local to myself. Deki is here in Compton. Yupong I could pick up in downtown LA, but I think they also have a Fullerton location or Brea location. Can't remember off the top of my head, but a lot of this stuff is local to me where I could just pick it up so I don't have to pay for shipping. One, I'm a cheapskate. I don't want to pay for shipping. Two, if I could go pick it up, I could get it quicker that way. All right, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you got any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments. If you're looking into getting another Recoma machine, check out the link in the description box. It doesn't hurt to talk to them. Do not feel like you're gonna get sold something that you can't handle because that's the last thing they're trying to do. They want your business, but they're here to provide the information to you. There's nothing wrong with being a beginner because I'm a beginner when it comes to embroideries. Don't be scared or nervous about that. Don't be scared about asking dumb questions. All the questions I ask, I know are dumb and they had an answer for all of them, all right? Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, BigBrandoTV. Catch you guys on the next one, man, yeah.